Hallelujah. Well, this is the laws of prosperity. I'm trying to get there. Hallelujah. Mm. We've been talking about fruit and how that your giving initiates fruit. Now, that means it starts it up. So when you give the first time or whenever you give, you got to know you have to have a beginning. And we told you that the initiation is not the sum total. So you got to keep right on giving in order to develop the fruit, because fruit has to be developed. So we're going to give it time to develop. Say, I'm going to give it time. Now, as a result of you giving it time and the fruit begins to develop, now you're giving, because see, this is why you can't stop giving. And you cannot be a sporadic giver. That means you give sparingly. Why? Because the tree that you planted is depending on your consistent giving. Because you don't know which one of those seeds that you put in the ground is going to do this job or that job. See, the assignment is in the seed. And if you sow in according to what God told you to give, uh, listen to me, that's very key. Giving what God put in your heart to do. Not what you think you can afford. But given what God put in your heart to do, this is why you need to spend time. Because he'll tell you what to put in, in your envelope. And not just what we get accustomed to doing. Hallelujah. Come on, you might as well get happy. Because we just getting started this morning. Hallelujah. Don't get sad now. Hallelujah. So now we're going to talk about your giving causes that fruit to abound or increase. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to, uh, I believe it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. You know, we, we, this is a very, very famous passage. But until we understand the principle of seed time and harvest, we're going to think that when I put a seed in there, I'm going to get my return back tomorrow. You might. It might be a short term. When I worked in the bank, you had short term, then you had long term. It could be a loan, or it could be an investment, or it could be a, a CD. So it just depends on what you wanted and how fast you needed it. Now, the short term, it might come back, but you're at a greater risk. Because it may not yield what you think. Uh-oh. I told you, stop living on the edge. Some things you might have to lose. Look at your neighbor and say, you might have to lose some stuff to learn what, this, what Pastor Diana is talking about. Because, see, some of y'all are not going to wait. You're going to wait till you get to the point where it's so bad, your faith can't uphold it. And you're going to wait till that moment. Now, I'm talking to you this morning. You better hear me. You're going to wait till it gets so bad. Because your pride is in the way right now. Instead of getting the stuff back and saying, you know what, this is not beneficial. I'd rather be in a place where my faith works than to have a, a car or a house or stuff that can't uphold and my faith can't keep me in there. Because eventually somebody going to know that you're not all that you think you are. That it's going to show. Because your giving should bring increase. Mm. But look at this verse 6 in 2 Corinthians 9. But this I say, he which so sparingly, you need to underline that word sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. Now you need a whole lot of money to come into your house, but you're sowing sparingly. Now what is sparingly? Because you know you can read the whole situation here. Sparingly is in a restricted or infrequent manner. You don't do it enough. You do it every now and then. You can't get the harvest you're looking for given every now and then. Giving has to become you. Uh-oh. And then when you do give every now and then, it's in small quantities. But you got this great big million dollar plan on the table but you're giving sparingly you don't give enough 
You say, well, I can't afford to get. Oh, yes, you can. Let me take away your treats. What you're willing to give up to get the answer, the result. Because that's going to determine how you give, when you give, how much you give. See, the less you're willing to give up of you, the less can come back. You're not giving enough of you yet. Oh, Jesus. It says, if you give sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully from a place of bounty, because you see yourself giving all the time. I see myself giving all the time. I, I don't find an occasion where I don't feel like giving. I don't come to church and don't feel like sowing. I come so I can bring my seed. Oh, Jesus. So I can be trained some more. Because my seed is at stake. He says, if you do it sparingly, if you do it in a restricted or a, a in other words, and you're doing it with a, a tight fist, you really don't want to let it go, but you don't, you know, you know, it's time to give something, so you stick it in there. Hoping. Not knowing, hoping, kind of hope, kind of hope, because you don't have no guarantee. And you keep right on giving like that because you don't have a guarantee in your heart when the word guarantees you increase. The word guarantees you increase. There's not a service. I don't care if it's in this house or wherever I go, I got a seed. I'm deliberately planning it. When I, when I look at my books for the month, I'm not planning to take away seed. I'm planning to put more seed in there. How can I get rid of something to put more seed? If you don't become seed-minded, you're going to always be needed. Because giving causes you to abound. Hmm. Man, I can preach this this morning, but come on, stand to your feet.